There was this picture of Venus as a kind of primitive, steamy Earth, complete with um, giant tree ferns and dinosaurs. There's been chemicals measured in the atmosphere that tell you at some point Venus had an ocean's worth of water that is now gone. It means that standing on the surface, you will meet absolutely incredible situations. You will see red skies, orange in color. This is the hell, real hell. Despite the fact that there's mounting evidence that Venus was once habitable and was so similar to our own planet that it's been nicknamed Earth's twin next door, it doesn't really get talked about all that much. Certainly not as much as Mars. Although the surface of Venus is an extremely hostile environment, at about 50 kilometers above the surface, the atmosphere of Venus is the most Earth-like environment, other than Earth itself, in the solar system. It is proposed here that in the near term, human exploration of Venus could take place from aerostat vehicles in the atmosphere, and that in the long term, permanent settlements could be made in the form of cities designed to float at about a 50 kilometer altitude in the atmosphere of Venus. It's nice to know that exploring Venus through manned missions is possible, but our long-term goal of becoming an interplanetary species and establishing a colony must be more challenging. Generating the lift for entire cities to float in the Venusian clouds seems like it would be a monumental feat of engineering. To be sure, it would be hard, but not quite as hard as one would think. Venus is millions of kilometers closer, so why aren't we interested in colonizing it instead? Venus offers unique advantages and disadvantages to space colonizers, which are different from Mars. Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. American aerospace engineer and author Jeffrey A. Landis said, We would like to study a location in the solar system with atmospheric pressure near one bar, temperature in the range where water is liquid, 0 to 100 degrees Celsius, abundant solar energy, and with the primary materials required for life, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen present. Other than the surface of the Earth, the only other place where these conditions exist is the atmosphere of Venus, at an altitude of about 50 to 60 kilometers above the surface. Landis studied the feasibility of human colonies on Venus, explaining that floating a city 31 miles above the planet's surface would be relatively straightforward. Because Venus' atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide, a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, the regular air you're breathing now, could easily generate the necessary lift. What's more, Landis says, Venus has plenty of room. A billion habitats, each one with a population of hundreds of thousands of humans, could be placed to float in the Venus atmosphere. Right now, we've got the US and Chinese governments interested in sending manned missions to Mars. Billionaires want to pay good money to get their own spacecraft there, and NASA's even started searching for potential colonists. But there are currently no manned missions to Venus in discussion at all, which is kind of odd when you consider that Venus is more than 14 million kilometers, 8.7 million miles, closer to Earth than Mars is. Venus is actually an easier and less costly colonization proposition than Mars is. For one, the round trip from Earth to Venus would be 30 to 50 percent shorter than it would be to Mars. While Mars is often estimated to take six months to get there, you'll get to Venus in just three months. Just think about how much food, fuel, and time this would save, particularly when we're considering carrying enough supplies over there to set up a habitable environment. Pros and Cons of Colonizing Venus Venus is closer to the Sun, which gives it four times more solar energy potential than Mars, and its thick atmosphere offers far better defense from solar radiation and meteorites than Mars' wispy protective layer. Yet there is a very good reason why Venus is left out in the cold in these discussions. Venus is unofficially labeled the hell planet of the solar system. The surface temperature of Venus is 460 degrees Celsius, which is so hot that lead melts. The pressure is 96 bar. You've got to go to one kilometer below water on Earth to reach that sort of pressure. If it wasn't bad enough, when it rains on Venus, it rains sulfuric acid. 
the Venus clouds are essentially made of condensed sulfuric acid. It gets better. The surface is riddled with volcanoes, adds strong winds and lightning storms. However, just imagine Venus as an ocean planet, an ocean of CO2. If we were exploring an ocean planet, we wouldn't talk about conditions at the bottom. By this measure, the Earth itself is uninhabitable. We'd talk about the surface of the ocean. That's how we need to think of Venus. On Venus, a pressurized balloon, or city, of nitrogen and oxygen would float 50 kilometers above the surface. For our purposes, this is the surface. Here, the gravity and pressure would be almost identical to Earth. Float another five kilometers up, and temperatures are the same, around 27 degrees Celsius. This is an extremely habitable zone, more habitable than the Moon, Mars, Europa, or any other destination we're thinking about. This is almost Earth. It's the best possible place to explore, also the closest. Venus is also, relatively speaking, incredibly rich in the chemical ingredients for life, even agriculture. Unlike Mars, which has a thin and barren atmosphere, Venus contains carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Yes, the rain is sulfuric acid, but that's also a resource. It's the same thing we use for batteries. Most intriguingly, the clouds of Venus may already contain life. The possible life on Venus. Any colonization, of course, relies on being as self-sufficient as possible. You don't want to rely on massively expensive supplies from the Earth being shipped on a regular basis. When you can't have easy access to the surface, that might seem overly limiting. Landis does in fact discuss contraptions for accessing raw materials from the surface of Venus in colonization of Venus, but say we assume that is limited, there are still more possibilities with an atmosphere than might first meet the eye. The dark patches in Venus's atmosphere may, in fact, be created by cloud-borne bacteria. As plankton swims in our seas, unknown microbiology may be swimming in Venusian clouds. The changes in Venus's albedo, brightness, are as yet unexplained, and life is a highly plausible explanation. CO2 is easy, as 96% of the Venus atmosphere is made of it, so you can pretty much just suck it in. Together with water and nutrients brought from Earth, you can grow plants, which give you food and oxygen for breathing. The challenge, then, is how to get water. Since it doesn't exist in pure form, it has to be extracted from sulfuric acid H2SO4, and there are several ways of doing that. One of these methods is sulfur-eating bacteria, or more correctly, sulfate-reducing bacteria could be used to convert sulfuric acid to water. Between Mars and Venus? And it doesn't even need to be pressurized. At 50 kilometers, the pressure is 1 atm, same as Earth. At a cooler 55 kilometers, it's still a manageable 0.5 atm, roughly equivalent to Mount Everest Base Camp, which is 5 kilometers up from Earth. Mars is less than 1% of the pressure of Earth, a level at which your blood would literally boil. If a Venusian habitat was punctured, air would just slowly leak out. On Mars, one puncture and your house would rapidly decompress. Venus also has gravity, which is 90% of Earth's, compared to 38% for Mars. The gravity in the clouds is functionally the same as at the surface. Hence, you'd feel the same in your cloud house, just a bit lighter. More importantly, you wouldn't lose bone mass or require constant exercise to keep your body from atrophying. Venus, unlike Mars, also has a roof. By roof, I mean protection from the solar elements. Even at 55 kilometers up, there's enough atmosphere to shield from a lot of radiation. In contrast, the thin Martian atmosphere affords little to no protection at all. A year on Mars is like getting 9,600 chest x-rays or 48 CAT scans. This isn't good for our bodies, and everything would need to be shielded. The result could be that we end up going to Mars, but living underground. What's the point when you could be on Venus, living in the clouds? Venus also has resources. Mars has rocks, but Venus has ample chemical elements in the clouds. Martian soil is irradiated, deeply toxic, and prone to planet-wide dust storms that blot out the sun. In the Martian clouds, however, we could harness naturally occurring water, sunlight, nitrogen, and other elements to create agriculture. Humans cannot exist without other life, and the Venusian clouds are a place that can support life in general. 
maybe not chickens, but certainly some form of munchable algae. Then there's energy. While Mars has the solar power of a cloudy day on Earth, you'll still be using much of the energy to regulate temperature and pressure, stuff you get above Venus for free. On Venus, you get more solar power and plentiful heat and energy from below the clouds. The sulfuric acid rain can also be combined with lead to make batteries. Finally, Venus is just closer. Its orbit is the closest to ours, so we have a good launch window every 19 months, and the trip will take less than five. Mars has a good launch window every 25 months, and the trip would take over eight. Venus is effectively a full human baby closer, six months saved on waiting time and three months saved traveling. This has significant benefits in terms of fuel, resources, and sanity. Therefore, Venus is simply a much better candidate for colonization than Mars. As NASA scientist Jeffrey A. Landis says, Venus has great advantages over conventional space colony concepts in that the gravity is provided by the planet, radiation protection is provided by the atmosphere, and no pressurization is needed. The habitats can float at or near the one bar level. In addition, the atmosphere contains major volatiles needed for life, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and above the clouds, the environment has an abundance of solar energy. For the last two decades, we keep making new discoveries that collectively imply a significant increase of the likelihood to find life elsewhere, said Thomas Serbuchin, the head of NASA's Science Directorate, who helps select missions to explore the solar system. Many scientists would not have guessed that Venus would be a significant part of this discussion. But just like an increasing number of planetary bodies, Venus is proving to be an exciting place of discovery.